Hi everybody. Yeah, you're yeah, welcome to this YouTube channel again. Yeah, she's it. <laughs> the mental health nurse and the child of God. So um we tell you you realize yeah. Thank you to everyone who have subscribed to this channel, to the comments, to the likes. I really appreciate it. Thank you for your word of support. Thank you so much. So today I want to do something now before I go into what I want to do today. I just want to say I want to encourage us to keep up with this channel. Fine, you might not find it interesting at start because we are talking mind things and psychological things. But I want you to understand that some of those things we are talking about are not things that obviously appear to us at first. But one way or the other, they are with us, they are us, and we need to take a conscious effort to address them. And um, one of my burden is I want to bring therapy to the church. I want to bring therapy from the word of God. I want to bring therapy to the people of God and to make us value what Christ has done to us and what Christ is doing to us. So today we want to talk on something very interesting, like I said, and it's the soil in me. Mm, obviously, we are all farmers. <laughs> Yeah, the soil in me. I remember when we got our new site, um, one day we just woke up and we saw a ball um, behind at our backyard. And we were all wondering, I was wondering, my mom was wondering, my dad actually said the straight, straight to us that this plant looked like a melon or a watermelon. And we we're wondering, who planted this thing? Who, who, who brought it up? How did it... How did it grow? You know, watermelon or melon, we did not intentionally do that anyway, but it was growing. The second week, the thing grew bigger, the next week grew bigger. We wanted to know what it was actually growing. We wanted to know what was actually growing. Watermelon. <laughs> Who planted watermelon? <laughs> that was because question we started asking ourselves. Who planted watermelon? Is it possible for watermelon to grow by itself? And you know, all of those things we were asking ourselves. But we were able to go back and realize that for like a month we were drinking watermelon in the house. Almost every other day, my dad buys, my mom buys, and we keep throwing it, throwing the seeds around, throwing it. We're just doing it unconsciously like that. So the watermelon grew. <laughs> and continuously we had, we enjoyed the watermelon. You know, there was a lesson I got in that short event is that, um, there are many things that take place in our life that becomes um, a seed in us. Now, I I said to myself that the the place of growth in man and the place at which anything can germinate in a man is the mind, is the emotion, is willpower. Over all of it, the soul. The soul of a man is the soil. Our soul is the soil. You wonder why you do some things and you cannot really trace it back. It's not something you learned. It's not something you it's not something that was taught, but alas, you are doing it. It's it's you, and that's because every of the every of certain activities got to you, they they came to you and they begin to grow, and your your mind, your your soul fertilized it and it grew. It became it became something big. It became something that dictates you. It became something that dictates your action. It became something that dictates how you see God. It became something that dictates how you see yourself. And at every point, we don't consciously put those things in check. We don't put, consciously put those things in um in, in we don't consciously weigh them. We, we keep manifesting the negative one. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 3 to 9. Let's read it together. And it's a, pop, it's a popular scripture. It's a popular scripture. Then, and he sold. Okay, verse 3, yeah. And he spoke many things unto them in parable, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the fowl came and devoured them. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and that earth, some scripture call it soil, and forth 
and fought with they sprung they sprung up because they had no deepness of of it and when the sun was up they were scorched and be, because they had no roots they withered away and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprung, sprung up and shook them but other fell into good soil and brought forth fruit some an hundredfold some sixty fold some some sixty fold some thirty fold which showed us that it is possible to grow a thing and it to germinate as much as it is a natural law to grow a thing and germinate on the land it is natural to grow a thing in horse and germinate and you know what i realize is that 90 percent of the things we do and what we have and who we have is not those things that were consciously planted in us they are things that planted in us as a result of events of life they are things that planted in us you know the scriptures that the farmer went and so you know it, it shows it shows that that farmer was not consciously sowing some things because the bible says that some fell some fell some fell in different places now Life does not always consciously sow things in us. Life does not life does not consciously sow, sow things in us to the point that you will be able to know how it's growing and the effect of it on you. One of the therapists I used to follow says that as a therapist, when they see a particular thing in a man, like you're telling me you are bitter, they will be able to know that the bitterness is as a result of of a particular thing for instance i met someone who said she does not really want to get married she does not want to get married she does not like this she does not like a man and after a lot of time i thought of helping her out of that face and one of the first things i asked her was were you raped she said no then i stepped back to myself and said what could have also made her not to like a man and i asked have you ever seen a happy marriage before? You know, the first thing she said is, is there anything like a happy marriage? <laughs> of course, I know marriage can be tough. It's a hard work, like my friend used to say. But then, it's, some people don't have it good. And it became an information for everything that happens to us in life is an information and a seed that planted. You know, scripture understood this. Jesus understood this when he was saying that, you will love the Lord, oh God, yes. Say you will love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your mind and with all your soul. So when Jesus wanted to say it later, years back, he was saying with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul, and with all thy strength. Because whatever that happens in those places cannot be easily uprooted. And now, how do I take charge that I don't become a negative person? Um, I don't bait a negative result from the things that happen to me. Simple. You have to start your day well planned. It's not what we do consciously. It, we, we can plan a market, but we don't plan We don't plan our day. Like, I'm waking up this morning. What do I want to do this morning? What do I want to achieve this morning? I'm not going to respond to this day in my emotion. I'm not going to respond to this day in my negative thoughts. I'm not going to respond to this day in my failures. I'm not going to respond to this day in my errors. I'm going to respond to this day with all consciousness of pos positivity, with a positive sense at every time. That is first. And when we are going back to bed, before we go back to bed, it is essential for us to also monitor ourselves, ensuring that those things that get to us, or whatever, every word we hear, everything we see, it is well sieved. You sieve it. You go through it. Because if you don't go through it, it will stay. And you know, the only thing it needs is rain. You know, the Bible was saying that, and when the sun came, the farmer thought those ones on the road were growing. But when the sun came, same thing when prayer comes, same thing when um, challenges come, and you begin to realize that, ah, how am I this bitter? How am I this moody? How am I this um, angry? It's because those seeds were planted. You did not uproot them. And before you go to your bed, things we can do. You go through your day. Yeah, you go through your day. How has my day been? What people do to me that hurts me? What do I do to people that hurts me? You settle it and you sleep. You know, some of the reason why we wake up sometimes and we feel so bad, so moody, and we put everybody in our house on check on standing is because we did not check our own emotion. We did not check how we feel. We did not check how we think. We did not check how we react. So 
for everything around us, for everything within us, they are information and a seed that form a pathway in our brain. You know, one of those things we don't know is that when someone tells you you're a failure, or when you tell someone the person is a failure, for the two of you, there is a nerve message. There is a nerve message. Um, it begins to it passes as a synapse. It goes like that. You know, it's it's a it's a science thing. So it's a nerve. It forms a pathway in your brain, and those pathways will not go easily because it's forming. So it will take you consciousness to break those things down allow what you want to stay with you and what you don't want to stay with you. and when you wake up one day and you realize this is not who i am i'm not a bitter person i'm not an angry person i'm not a jealous person but i'm jealous of a friend you can sit back to yourself and ask yourself why am i doing this actually like i said i can't finish up this topic in a series in a in a video so i will encourage you to see my platform as a therapy or a therapeutic platform where we can all help ourselves to get better, especially in Christ, and to also enjoy the grace of God. Thank you for subscribing, thank you for sharing, and thank you for your love. I love you. Bye bye.